Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we are discussing how do you develop for Decentraland? How do you build scenes, apps, and games? Well, one option is to use the builder where you can build your scenes and your 3D objects with an easy drag and drop visual tool. Another option is to use the software and development kit to create scenes with code. You can also use a blended approach of using the builder and the SDK. The software development kit is what we're going to learn in this course. We'll also take a look at the builder. So we'll take a look at the blended approach, but primarily the software development kit. With the Decentraland SDK, you can control how certain content on your parcel is served to other users. So you have a lot of control about what is in your land and how it can be accessed. For example, you can build a house and only allow certain addresses to enter the house. You're free to decide whether you will charge other players to access the content in your scene. If you have any troubles throughout the way, there are many community servers out there where you can ask questions like the official Discord for Decentraland at dcl.gg slash discord. And of course, Stack Overflow, GitHub, and many other websites online for help developing. So coming up in the next section, we're going to do an overview of development, including what you can do with the SDK, what you need to develop, and how a scene works in Decentraland to render an environment or a game or an app. Then we'll jump into building a scene together with that software development kit, We'll also take a look at the builder. So don't miss the next section. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture we're beginning our section, an overview of developing for Decentraland. Starting off we'll discuss what can you do with the Decentraland software development kit. One thing you can do is generate a project with a Decentraland scene. You can create a default project that includes all the assets required to render and run your content. And you can immediately preview the scene and run it. And you can add more content or edit the content to your heart's desire. You can build, test, and preview the content of a scene locally in your web browser. This is completely offline. You don't have to make any Ethereum transactions, own any land, or own any mana. You can preview your scene just like you would preview a regular website that you built out with a web server. As well with the Decentraland SDK, you can write TypeScript code using the decentralized Decentraland API to add interactive and dynamic behavior to the scene. So you don't have to just have a static scene, you can have interactions and dynamic behaviors and animations. TypeScript is the primary language, but you can use other languages as well. With the software development kit, you can upload the content of your scene to the content server. You can link your land tokens to the URL of the content that you've uploaded, and you can publish your scenes to Decentraland. Coming up next, we're going to talk about what is available in the Decentraland SDK. One tool that we will install is the Decentraland command line interface. This allows you to generate new Decentraland scenes from your terminal. You can generate the scenes locally on your computer. You can preview the scenes and upload them to Decentraland's server. Another tool of the SDK is Decentraland ECS. This is a TypeScript package that has a library of helper methods to help you create interactive experiences. You can create and manipulate objects in the scene and facilitate transactions between players or applications. As well, in the software development kit are scene examples, and more is being developed over time and added to the kit. Join me in the next lecture. We're going to discuss what do you need to develop for Decentraland. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. In this lecture, we are discussing what do you need to develop for Decentraland. To develop a scene locally on your computer and test it out, you don't need any land tokens or mana cryptocurrency. You can build your scene completely offline, and you don't have to deploy it to the network or server. 
for testing, once you're ready to put your scene onto Decentraland, then you will need a piece of land, so a land token, to put your scene into Decentraland. You will need to install Node and NPM. In the terminal, this will allow you to handle your scene dependencies and to install the Decentraland command line interface. So we will include for you a section on how to use the command line interface, how to install NPM, and how to install Decentraland. The Decentraland CLI is used to build, preview, and upload scenes. As well, you will need a source code editor, and this will allow you to edit your scene with code. We recommend Visual Studio Code or Atom. Decentraland supports different programming languages. TypeScript is recommended, but you can use another tool or language and compile it into JavaScript as long as the compiled scripts are contained within a single JavaScript file named game.js, which we'll see in our project. As well, Decentraland has scenes. So what does it actually mean to build a scene in Decentraland? We're going to break down the scene in the next lecture. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to break down what is a scene in Decentraland. The scene refers to the content that you deploy to your land. The scene is the interactive program that renders the content. The scene that you build is rendered and viewable on the Decentraland web client, so you can view it in your web browser. An example of a scene could be a game, an interactive experience, an art gallery, a 3D environment, and more. Everything in a scene is represented as an entity. This entity can include components that determine its characteristics, like it could be a house or it could be a table with characteristics. These components store information about that entity. As well, in a scene, you can have systems. A system will hold functions that change information stored in components. Note that scenes don't run in the same context as the engine. That means that the code of a scene cannot access the web page document object model or the window of the web page. As well, Decentraland has a game loop. This is the backbone of a Decentraland scenes code. The game loop will cycle through part of the code at a regular interval, such as every frame. The game loop will listen for player input, update the scene, and re-render the scene when there needs to be a change. And that is an introduction to Decentraland's scene and the game loop. Coming up next, we're going to do an introduction to blockchain and the command line. Then we're going to install Node, NPM, and Decentraland. Then we're going to have an introduction on JavaScript, and we can then build out our scene. So if you have experience with any of the prerequisites, then feel free to skip them. Otherwise, if you are new to a certain topic, then watch that prerequisite section. And I'm excited to take you through the rest of the course, so join me in the next section. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to install the Decentraland command line interface. This allows you to work with Decentraland via your terminal or command line. So you can build Decentraland scenes, build Decentraland projects, preview the scenes, deploy them, to a test server and publish them to Decentraland. So everything that you want to do with Decentraland, you do with the Decentraland command line interface. So let's go ahead and install it. For the installation, you will need Node version 14 or greater. And with Node, you will need NPM and typically they come as a bundled package. So you should have Node and NPM installed on your computer. If you are on Windows, then open up your command prompt application as an administrator. 
by right-clicking and selecting Run as Administrator. Then use the command npm install. You're using the Node Package Manager to install a package. Use the dash G flag to install the package globally. And then install the package called Decentraland. So that is on Windows. If you are on a Mac, then you're going to open up your terminal application and use the command sudo, which means you are running the terminal command as an administrator. Then you're going to use npm install dash g decentraland. So very similar. Hit enter and enter in your password for your computer and hit enter again. And I spelled decentraland wrong, so just be careful about the spelling of your commands. Spelling and casing is important to get correct on a Unix terminal for Mac and Linux. On Windows, again, spelling is very important. Casing is less important. So after a few seconds, you should have Decentraland installed. You'll have about 650 packages installed. In my case, they are changed because I already had Decentraland. So now you can check that you have Decentraland installed with the command DCL in your terminal. This will give you a bunch of suggestions of what you can do with Decentraland. For example, you can use DCL-version to check the version of Decentraland that you have. If you encounter any problems with Decentraland, then downgrade to version 3.9.0, which is the one that I am currently using, the latest one at this time. If you are not able to use the command DCL, which is short for Decentraland, then try restarting the terminal or command prompt. Also try restarting your computer. Check to make sure that you installed everything correctly. You can try installing again. You can also check that DCL was added to your environment variables. Now, you can also turn off usage data for Decentraland because by default it will track your statistics anonymously. So if you are on Windows, use the command notepad followed by this squiggly line with a forward slash dot DCL info. This is the info file for Decentraland. So that is the command for Windows. If you are on Mac, use the command nano followed by that squiggle hyphen forward slash dot DCL info and hit enter. You should see your user ID and your track stats, two properties for the Decentraland info. The user ID you shouldn't change, but the track stats you can change from true to false. So you just use your arrow keys on your keyboard to move around and you can just hit delete to change values. When you're done, hit control X to exit, hit Y for yes to save the file, and then hit enter on file name to write. This will bring you back to your terminal. And if you're on Windows, then you just have to edit the file with your notepad because you use the command notepad. So that is how you can install Decentraland and turn off tracking statistics or usage data. Join me coming up next. We are going to learn how we can use Decentraland and build scenes. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.